I did not realize how much of the stuff we actually had. Hi there. Okay, so we have, um, I'm doing a quick video about cast iron. Decided to pull out all of our cast iron. It's a lot more than I thought we had. But anyway, um, we have a nice wide so selection of stuff here. So we have some of the older, older stuff. Um, at least three of these are from Lena's, uh, uh, well, Lena's side of the family. They have been passed down for, was it five generations? So, um, yeah, every generation of the girl on her side of the family has worked with these, with these pot, uh, with, with these pans. Um, we have some stuff that is from my family as well. We have stuff that this one here was a wedding present. This one I bought on my own. And this one here was a pre-engagement present. And then we have, I don't think, one, two, maybe three of these pans we actually paid for. <laughs> um, yeah, cast iron is an awesome is an awesome tool to have in your kitchen. For meats, it gets you an awesome sear. Um, it's very resilient. Um, I can, literally cannot rave uh, more about how awesome cast iron is. You can go straight from the stove, any kind of stove, straight into the straight into the uh, oven, from the oven straight onto the campfire. You can use it for absolutely everything, and there's so many different shapes and sizes and types of pot, pots and pans and skillets to use. Um, this one here is uh, one that, that uh, came from actually from my mother. This is our old tortilla pan. So it's like, yeah, that, that fed me and my brothers over and over again. This one here was a farm rescue. They were using it to scoop ashes out of, out of their fireplace. And who knows how old that thing was. It was in terrible shape when I, when I got it. And a little bit of, well, a lot of work and it's able to be used all over again. One of the key differences with uh, cast iron pans is how they're forged and how they're seasoned. Pans that have been seasoned over and over and over again, this guy here, well actually that one's an even better uh, uh, example, that have been used over and over again, they, they actually build up seasoning from, from all the food that has, that has been on them. These have been in storage, so there is a little bit of debris in there, but you can see they get almost that mirror kind, kind of finish. Whereas if you look at some of the newer pans, so once again, we have the older stuff. All this stuff here is, is from the Lodge Company. So all this is newer stuff. And you can see with that, with that se seasoning, see all those little bumps? It's not that nice, smooth, glassy kind, kind of finish. And I know the camera's probably not gonna be able to pick that up, but yeah. Let's say if you run your fingers across it, well, like even this pan here, it's the one we uh, did the pancakes in. You can he almost hear the, all those little bumps in there. I have this one here because this one here is actually the lid for this pot. So you get for for the for the price of one, you get a Dutch oven, a deep pot, and a skillet, or sorry, fr frying pan. And I used it today. I haven't washed or I haven't cleaned it yet because I want to show you guys how, how to clean it. These guys here all come from Taiwan. I got I got these for free. They came with no seasoning. So you can see that kind of grayish color there. That's the color that uh, that uh, all these pans come. I gotta fix that one. But yeah, all all these cast iron pans when they're when they're unseasoned, they come in that color. And then it's up to you to put the seasoning on them. They're not the greatest pans, but we go camping a lot. Um, these are the pans that we just have kind of loose here if we want to do something quick and we don't want to use the the, real, the really really good stuff. We'll just quickly use those. And then we have this guy here. I know it's a uh, past the boat. There's no markings on it. Don't know where it came from. Don't know how old it is. Don't know anything about that. So it just lives floating around, basically. Um, this flat skillet is awesome. I take this one camping a lot. Uh, with my type of uh, with with my with my type of stove, it. Uh, it doesn't see a lot of use here in the house, but the best part is, is that it has two sides, has a deep well there to catch any grease, has a flat side to do, uh, to do pancakes or bacon. You 
flip it over and it has a grill side. Once again, can catch the grease so you to do steaks and burgers. And it, one thing with cast iron, they are all very heavy. Um, cast iron retains its heat. It's perfect for uh, uh, caramelizing uh, meats and searing stuff. I end up using this guy here a lot because I do a lot of uh, game meat and a lot of stews and I can sear the meat right in there and I can put all the stew together in one in one pot and just let it go. Um, in a second here, I'm going to take you over to the uh, sink here and we're going to show you how to uh, properly clean your, your uh, cast iron. Okay, so now we're going to go with uh, cleaning cast iron. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to grab the soap, <gasps> and the hot water, and You never, ever use soap and hot water on a cast iron pan. That is one of the worst things you can do. Now, you might want to use a little bit of water, and you're only going to be using soap in extreme circumstances. I mean, you are rescuing this cast iron from the pit of death. Because you are, if you use soap and, and a scouring pad on that, you are going to strip off all that seasoning and you basically might as well just take an angle grinder to it and go right back down to the base coat. So, a little, a little bit of water, maybe. Um, if, you have, if you have a lot of oil in there, maybe some light soap, but I only had pancakes in this, so I'm not even gonna do that. I'm just going to take a little brush, make sure that I have all those particles lifted up, go around the edge, I didn't get any on the back side, I don't think. No, nice, it's still nice and clean. And we're just gonna wash that all out. Once you have it at that, at that point, take it, grab, grab a piece of paper towel, or, a tea, or your uh, tea towel or your drying rag or whatever you have. You want to get all that water out because cast iron is untreated iron. It will, it will rust super fast. So once you get it as dry as you possibly can get onto the stove, high heat to evaporate any other water. Or if you have your oven on, straight into the oven. Once you have all, all that uh, all that water uh, um, evaporated off of it, you're actually going to hit it with some. You're, you're going to hit it with a light coating of oil, extremely light, just to, just enough to coat the pan, and that's going to prevent any water from from uh, from from forming any rust on that. Now, we have been to so many places we've taken our cast iron there specifically our our, our uh, big griddle and somebody uh grabbed it threw it in threw it in the dish pit uh soaked it in soap and the thing rusted well it took me about two days to get all the rust off of that thing and re-season it basically strip it down to its to its base coating and yeah, get all that seasoning put back onto it. Now, I'm going to give you an example of an extreme case. So, let's say I had a bunch of crispy bits in there. All right, another thing with cast iron, you typically want to clean the cast iron while it's still warm. That'll help you with the cleaning process a lot. Okay, let's say I had some crispy bits on there some uh, chunks, out. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I, I had some chunks on there, some little bits of steak that had somehow become part of the, of the pan. Or let's say that I just got this pan and it, it was very uh, misused and mistreated and it's full of rust. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna use this pan because I have a perfect example for that one. We're gonna go with the barn rescue. Now, I've been working on this one for a while, and it was gross. I'm not even going to describe the stuff that I found in, the, in this pan, or in this pot. 
but you can even see it still is form, for, forming a little a little bit of rust there on the bottom where other pots have scratched through the seasoning. So for that, you want to have a little bit of abrasion. So I'm going to grab sea salt or salt, whatever, table salt, and we're going to coat the bottom of the pan or the pot in, in that salt. Now this is going to be our, our scouring pad. On top of that salt, we're going to put oil. Cast iron loves to be worked with oil. And we're just going to grab some paper towel. And we're going to scratch up all that rust. And the best thing is, is that salt, it's, we have the salt, the oil, and the, and the paper towel is acting as a very light sandpaper, basically. It's a little bit, it's a little bit harsher. The, the salt also ha is, uh, well, the chemical formula for salt is sodium chloride. So it, ha it has a little bit of chlorine in there, that, or natural chlorine in there, so that, that's also going to help clean and sanitize the pot. Gonna hit all those trouble areas, even on the outside, around the rim. Because when you're seasoning the whole pot, you are trying to seal all the iron inside in a nice coating of oil. And the best thing of using oil with the, with the salt is that it doesn't dissolve as fast. So, now we have that scoured a bit. You can see we don't have any, any more of those rust marks in there. Now we're going to hit it with water. Just to rinse out the salt. And there we go. Now remember, we don't want to leave any water in there. So, using a fresh paper towel, you, with, with uh, cast iron, you end up using a lot of paper towel. Can't forget about that little guy that I have left on there. And then you're going to lock in the seasoning. The way you do that, All that moisture out of all that water out of there is now we're going to use a generous amount of oil <clears throat> if you can do this outside in a barbecue that's even better you're going to take your oven always double check that there's nothing in the oven and you're going to take it up to 450 500 now let's go with 500 now you have your oil in the pot Using that rag, I'm going to coat the pot all the way around. Just like that. Flip it upside down, whether it's a whether it's a pan, pizza pan, frying pan, whatever. It's going upside down, and it's going into the oven like that, and you're leaving it alone. Um, if you have, so what that's going to do is your oil actually has what's called a smoke point. So have you ever, if you ever have a uh, frying pan on on the stove, you put your oil in there, and you see that black smoke that's uh, that comes off of it you've gone past your oil smoke point. Canola oil has a smoke point of, I believe, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> we have this in here at 500. It's gonna burn off that oil, but it's going to leave a coating. That coating is your seasoning. And that, that's how you're gonna get that awesome glass finish at the end there, and that's how you're going to protect your <laughs> pot, your pan. <laughs> now this guy here, He's been heated up. 
I can see all the water has been yeah, all the water has been uh, removed off of that. Now for, for long-term storage, we're just gonna hit it with just a drop. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a rag, something, and just completely coat that pan. So you get that nice gloss. And then that's ready to go back in, in, in onto the shelf. Now for long-term storage, this handle is extremely hot. Excuse me. <clears throat> for long-term term storage, well, first of all, you're gonna let that cool down. And then all I do, I usually don't do it with this guy because I end up using this guy all, almost every day. But for long-term storage, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna put a piece of paper towel like that over it. That way you can grab your other pots and pans, stack them on top. You don't have to worry about scratching your, uh, your nicely seasoned uh, um, cooking area. And then yeah, with this guy here, we're gonna leave them in there at, fi at 500. Right now the oven is preheating, that's fine. It, let it preheat after it preheats. We're gonna probably leave them in there for about an hour and a half. Um, hour and a half to two hours is usually good. And then by that point, same thing, we're gonna pull them out. We're gonna do another light coating of oil. Sometimes you wanna do about, uh, well, if you're, if you're getting a brand new pan, like brand new out of the box, you wanna do this part at least five times. A coating of oil, put it in. Take it out, coating of oil, put it in. You wanna build up that seasoning. A lot of these uh, lodge pans come pre-seasoned. They still have that textured finish to them though, which is, which isn't always the best for cooking. But yeah, uh, usually with, as far as like brands of pans, you don't really want anything Taiwan, you don't really want anything China, you want your pans to be made in uh, USA because it's just a better quality product, um, which the better quality pan you have is going to give you better quality food. Um, majority of my stuff I get from Cabela's, me personally, I stay away from Cabela's branded stuff because it's made in China. Although I'd be willing to try it because it looks like it has a pretty good build. Um, but yeah, that's a, your basics of cast iron if you take good care of it. Um, yeah, if, if you can find some old, some old cast iron in an antique store, you want to look for your other Wagners. You want to look for anything that's like made in the USA. Everything else that's made in China, Taiwan, is like it, it'll, it'll be stamped. Lodge products are great. Um, Griswold, we don't really have Griswold pans up here in Canada, unless you find them in, in a uh, uh, antique shop. Um, I have lo mostly lodges, some Griswolds that came from from the states, and some Wagners. Um, and then the Taiwan stuff that is just campfire stuff for me. But yeah, anyway, hope that helps you guys.